Well, new analysis from the Washington Post have found that at least eight fatal or serious crashes involving Tesla's autopilot occurred where the autopilot feature should not have been accessible in the first place. Now, the car's manual does warn that its autopilot can be unreliable on roads with hills and curves, but the company has not taken steps to limit its availability by geography. Now, for more on this, we want to bring in Colin Rush. He's Oppenheimer's managing director and senior research analyst. Colin, it's good to see you. Let's talk about what this means just in terms of wider spread adoption, right? Because we've seen the fact that EVs, at least in terms of demand, that demand seems to be falling. We have this report out from the Washington Post pointing to some issues that Tesla might have here with its autopilot system. What do you think that that how big of a risk do you see this being for Tesla, at least in the so short I, term? I want to I want to step back a, a little bit on this EV narrative, because I, I think the growth has been uh, moderating a little bit. We're still talking about 35 to 40 percent year over year unit growth on EV. So I just want to make sure that 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 point gets made here before we move on to the autonomous question. Um, you know, so but the, the, the report from The Washington Post is important because it, it raises the debate that I think is happening within the industry about how to manage risk as you bring this new technology into the market and who's actually responsible for that risk. And, and the Tesla policy that we're seeing really puts the onus on uh, operators to uh, comply with the manual rather than putting some in incremental controls uh, on this. And underlying that is a belief from Tesla that the system is actually better than drivers. And so statistically, uh, it, it's more, you know, it's it's likely that these cars will uh, perform better than a lot of drivers on the road, um, whether that's real or, or perceived, um, you know, by regular and the general public is, is still to be determined. But I think the, the regulatory approach that's, that we've seen so far is that the regulators are following the industry because the technology is moving so quickly. And as we go forward here, I think there's going to be more public concern and, and um, transparency that's necessary to really gain trust amongst the broader population around how these vehicles really do carry forward. But, Colin, but, but you don't see that weighing on demand, at least for Tesla, in the near term until we get some more clarity on that? Yeah, absolutely. Tesla's got a brand issue, and this really started with Elon's uh, acquisition of Twitter and and his his public persona uh, and and what he's he's got in in the uh, in that public discourse around his political views and and whatnot. And so, as we move forward with uh, this technology, I think it's a, a part of a larger branding issue for Tesla uh, in in terms of how they uh, you know present themselves because they were seen really as the leading uh, leading company on bringing. Uh, uh, clean, safe vehicles to market, and now as the reality comes forward, there's there's a lot more going on here, uh, and I think there's a lot of folks that have uh, gotten you know concerned with uh, supporting Elon Musk individually from a brand perspective, uh, and uh, there is this uh, ongoing cost out uh, you know program and, and kind of war of attrition that's happening in the EV space as well, and so I think this is just one more element of that that broader dynamic, and it certainly isn't going to help folks um, you know buy the FSD uh, offering. Uh, uh, or, or sign up for it up front. Uh, and there's going to be a lot of concern from other folks on how other OEMs are carrying this forward as well.